Welcome back. Let's talk about the Golden Knights versus Wild playoff series preview and prediction round one. Now I'm covering all first round eight matchups. The last one I did was the Florida Panthers versus the Tampa Bay Lightning there behind me. I'll put up a link up top over the next few seconds if you want to click on that or you can just as easily find it in my playlist under playoff series preview. Minnesota actually took the regular season series against Vegas. They were 5-1-2 against them. Now, the Golden Knights were 7-3-0 in their last 10 games. They were hot. Minnesota was 5-3-2. Kind of not. Now, I promise I won't rhyme again. The Golden Knights finished second in the West with 82 points. Uh, Minnesota finished third with 75. Let's start comparing some numbers here. Goals for... The Vegas Golden Knights finished third in the league. The Minnesota Wild finished ninth. Goals against? The Knights were first in the NHL, and the Wild were 16th. On special teams, uh, neither of these teams were too spectacular on the power play. Uh, Vegas finished 22nd overall. Minnesota was 24th. On the PK, uh, Vegas was first in the NHL. Minnesota 12th. Let's compare some miscellaneous stats here that could be very important in the playoffs, starting with shots on net. Vegas was 4th in the NHL, Minnesota was 28th. Face-off win percentage, Vegas was 20th, Minnesota was 28th. When it comes to hits per game, you know how much space disappears in the uh, extra season there, Vegas was 20th overall and Minnesota was 29th. When it comes to block shots, Vegas was first in the NHL, yeah. And Alec Martinez is number one in that category amongst all players. Minnesota finished second. When it comes to 20 plus goal scores, the Vegas Golden Knights have two with Patrick and Stone. However, Tuck and Marcheseau did reach 18. For the Wild, they also have two. That's Fiala and Kaprizov. Um, however, Eriksenek did score 19. Now for 40 plus point players, Vegas has got four of them. You can add Carlson to that. He got 39 and Tucky got 33. The Wild have two players. Uh, of course, that's Kaprizov and Fiala. And there are also three other players who had 30 plus points. And that was Zuccarello, Greenway, and Eriksson Eck. Now let's move on and talk about injuries for both clubs. The Vegas Golden Knights have three players who are day to day and it's unclear or not if the We'll start the first game, and I'm talking about Martinez, Pacioretty, and Nosek. Then there's Ryan Reeves, who's currently on the IR, but it's likely he'll start at the beginning of the playoffs. For the Minnesota Wild, there's no players of note. Keys to the series, starting with the Vegas Golden Knights. They need to improve their power play before Minnesota does. They're both atrocious. Now, there's, I got some players here who are X-Factors, starting with Riley Smith. He's really improved in the last third of the season, playing in that top six. They need more depth scoring. Ryan Reeves, he needs to annoy everybody on that Minnesota bench. I look forward to him and Felino going at it. Alex Tuck, the third line secret assassin. He loves breakaways. Look out for him. And of course, Pietrangelo, his first playoffs with Vegas. He's just important all over the ice. Moving on to the wild, they need more offense from their defense. Enough said there. The X Factors, for them, I've got a few players listed as well, starting with Eric Sinek, Jordan Greenway, Marcus Foligno. They all had breakout seasons. Foligno is kind of the uncredited captain of this team. I know the C is on Spurgeon's chest, but you know he sticks up for everyone on that bench. Zuccarello had a nice bounce back year as well. He looked great playing with Kaprizov. I mean, who wouldn't? But still, uh, Fiala... He's been looking dangerous in the last half of the season. Remember what he did last year in the playoffs? Every time the puck was on his stick, he was at least hitting a crossbar. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about some positional stats, starting with the goaltending and beginning with Mark andre Fleury of the Vegas Golden Knights. He's played 36 games this season, and he's got a sparkling 9-2-8 save percentage. The Vezina should be in the bag for this guy. Now, in 146 career playoff games... He's got a 901 average save percentage that's spread over 14 different seasons. Interesting fact, he hasn't missed the playoffs in 14 seasons as well. Now, uh, last season in four playoff games, he did have a 910 save percentage, and I would think he would be starting in net for the Golden Knights. Robin Leonard, 
in 19 games uh, during this regular season. He's got a 913 save percentage. Not bad. Uh, league average is 908, by the way. And in 26 career playoff games, he's got a 924 save percentage spread over three different seasons. And in the last 2019-20 uh, season, in 16 games, he had a 917 save percentage. Now for the Minnesota Wild, Cam Talbot in 33 games this season had a 915 save percentage. Continued his good play from last season with the Calgary Flames. Are you really that surprised? I don't know. Uh, in 25 playoff games, he only has an 898 save percentage spread over three seasons. However, that's deceiving because in his last 23 playoff games uh, spread over two seasons, he's got a 924 save percentage, and that includes his time uh, with the Flames. Now, he should be starting. I don't think there's any debate about that. Uh, Kakinen. Um, had 24 regular season games. He finished with a 902 save percentage. Could have been 908, but in his last game, uh, which was against the St. Louis Blues, the Wild were winning going into the second. They were up 3-0. The game finished, and I, I think the score was 7-0, 7-3 for St. Louis. So he kind of blew part of his save percentage right there. Uh, he's not in the Calder running anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about the defense and how many goals they've scored. Starting with the Vegas Golden Knights, they edge out the Minnesota Wild in that category. Martinez led Vegas with nine of them, Theodore had eight, and Brodeen led the Wild with nine. When it comes to points, uh, Vegas also edged Minnesota in this category. Theodore led the way with 42 for Vegas, and Spurgeon led the Wild with 25. In the plus-minus category, Theodore was the best on his team with a plus 28. Dylan Colgan played 29 games, if I'm pronouncing that last name properly, and he was a minus 3 with the worst on the D. Uh, for the Wild, uh, Sousey was a plus 22, and Spurgeon, their captain, was a minus 2. Now when it comes to the forward group here, starting with goals, the Knights just edge out the Wild only by two here. Pacioretty leads the way for Vegas with 24, Kaprizov for the Wild with 27. Point-wise, the Golden Knights also edge out the Wild. Uh, Stone leads the way with 61, Kaprizov for Minnesota with 51. In the plus minus category, Stone leads the way for the Knights with plus with a plus 26. Keegan Colsar is the worst with a minus four. For Minnesota, Felino is the best at a plus 19, and Johansson is the worst with a minus 10. Now, who do I give the edge to in each of these positional categories? Starting with goaltending, it's gotta be Vegas, right? With defense, Vegas. With the forward group, also Vegas special teams, yeah, it's the Golden Knights. A and coaching, maybe I give DeBoer or a slight edge here as well. Uh, what can I say? Now, who's my pick to win this series, you ask? Yeah, it's Vegas. It is. I know, you know, Minnesota gave them a hard time during the regular season, but playoffs is a new animal, and Vegas is just too good. For those of you who have skipped to the end of the video, who am I going to pick between these two clubs? Minnesota, probably in five. Probably. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Remember to be kind to each other out there. And look forward to my next video, by the way, which will be about the Colorado Avalanche and the St. Louis Blues. Thanks again. See you soon.